yourself sucked into the deep end, immersed in other people's drama and negativity. Pretty common for that to happen. Um, and even if you try to uh, avoid involvement, you might feel energetically or emotionally pulled into the deep water by what's going on in other people's lives. But it doesn't have to be the case. There are two simple ways to avoid the impact of other people's emotional state, attempts to draw you into their circumstances, verbal storms, and energetic drains. And I want to talk about those two. There probably are more, but I'm just going to focus on these two. And the first one <clears throat> I call observe, don't absorb. Now, I recently heard one of my friends tell somebody else, observe, don't absorb. And I did a little research before writing, <laughs> shooting this video and writing my associated blog post um, to find the origin of this wisdom. As with most things in the personal growth field, usually, you know, they're repeated a lot, but we, we can go back a ways to find the origin. Anyway, Ross Rosenberg developed a technique called observe, don't absorb. And that came out of his years of trying to understand his relationship with narcissists, as well as working with clients. When you simply observe someone's drama and negativity, you don't absorb it. And, and I know that that probably sounds difficult, but observing someone's condition or state is, is simpler than you think. And, and here are a few steps that you can follow. The first is to watch the person. Make this an observation exercise. Notice how the person behaves and what they say and their emotions and their facial expressions. And you know, pay attention to um, the stories they tell, uh, their desire to blame, their attempts to draw you into the water with them. When you become the observer rather than a participant, you emotionally and phys physically disconnect from that person and from their situation. And that removes you from what's happening with them and places you, you know, places a distance between you and them and, and how they're handling the situation, right? So very important to, to just be an observer. The second thing you can do is to resist judging the person's behavior, words, situation, emotions, Consider yourself like a journalist, you know, there to just impartially collect facts. Don't interpret or form opinions about what's happening with the other person. Just take mental notes, if you will, and remain neutral. The late Stuart Wilde used to observe world events, including airplane crashes and natural disasters and people's circumstances and say, interesting evolutionary experience interesting evolutionary experience. He had no judgment about what had happened or was happening. It was neither good nor bad, right nor wrong. Wild simply observed without attachment and didn't get emotionally involved at all in, the, in that event or in the people impacted, you know, with the people impacted by that event. He just watched unemotionally. So the third thing is to don't, not take on other people's emotions. <clears throat> Find ways mentally or physically to protect yourself. And this is especially true if you're an empath and feel what other people around you feel. I noticed this, um, that, um, you know, over the years I've worked on not being angry, not feeling, you know, angry a lot of the time. And when I'm around uh, people, which I was recently, who are angry, I found myself feeling angry. So I'm absorbing their emotional state em empathically. Um, so when you remain conscious of what's going on around you, you can actually step back and intentionally block the energy and emotion coming at you. You can deliberately stop yourself from absorbing people's emotional states. Now that's not always possible, but if you're conscious, you can do it. Even when somebody comes at you out of the blue, <clears throat> with a lot of emotion, you can step back and kind of put up an emotional shield. Um, if you've already absorbed their emotional state, just walk away. Or if, if somebody comes at you like that, you can just walk away and say, I don't want to be any part of this energy. 
But if you've already absorbed their energy, just walk away and then do something to cleanse your energy. You could ground, um, you know, put your feet on the ground, go hug a tree, um, smudge with sage in the Native American tradition, visualize yourself cleansed of, of the emotions and protected by a shield from further absorption. You can find a lot of information just on Google on how to cleanse your energy and aura and how to create psychic shields or psychic psychic bubble. Just, just do a little research. Okay, so the second way to avoid people's negativity and, um, and uh, drama is, is to follow this bit of wisdom. Don't step into the river if you don't want to get wet. Now, I first heard this adage from Jim Fortin. However, it strikes me as strikingly similar to a quote attributed to, I can't talk, to George Bernard Shaw. And he said, never, never wrestle with a pig. You get dirty. And besides, the pig likes it. Now, Ross Rosenberg um, actually shared that his observe, don't absorb strategy or technique was influenced by Shaw's words. So you avoid... Avoiding getting wet is also simpler than you might believe. Um, so the first thing, I have three ways you can do that as well. And so the first is to choose not to dive into the river with people immersed in negativity and drama. Just don't dive in. If you do, you're bound to get wet and swept downstream with them. So instead, walk away or step back. You can observe, listen, and even be supportive without stepping off the river bank and into the river with them. And you can accomplish that by, by not agreeing with the person, offering solution, not offering solutions or perspectives, and generally not engaging with them. So the second thing you can do is don't offer help or advice. Don't provide solicited or unsolicited advice. Don't offer to take some sort of action to help and do not commiserate with them in any way, shape, or form. In any, you, know, you don't want to support the person's point of view, their behavior, or their emotional state. While they may see your unwillingness to engage as being selfish, lacking compassion, or uncaring, you, you know that your approach is all about self-preservation. You don't want to drown with them. In fact, you can't help them if you're being swept along by the current that they've created. You have to be standing on firm ground to do that. So realize that people who are dramatic and negative usually enjoy getting people wet and dirty with them. They want people to jump into the river. They want you to agree with them and get on board emotionally. But that just helps them remain in their drama. It really does. It helps them remain in their negativity and it increases their conviction that they are justified to feel and act the way they do. So getting wet with them won't help them or you dry off, find a new perspective, or create better circumstances. And the third thing is don't accept invitations to help unless you can stay dry. And this step can be difficult when the person is going downstream fast. You know, they're, they're reaching for your hand, right? And you, know, you have to, you have to just let them rant and rave and feel their emotions. And then after looking like they're surely going to drown, let them come up for air. When the person is tired of the drama, the emotions, the negativity, and verbal outbursts, let them take a few deep breaths. Then ask if they're ready to approach their circumstances or experience with a new perspective. If they're calm and able to hear and listen to you, it's possible to support them with a conversation about other ways to see and respond to their situation. You might also be able to encourage them to find solutions or opportunities, but not before that point. So avoiding drama and negativity takes practice. Um, notice, when, notice when you're willing to dive into the water with someone. They're negative and you know, have a lot of drama going on. And when are you actually willing to dive in with them? Notice that and note the situation. Notice what makes you want to dive in with them and then decide not to do that next time. <laughs> Pay attention to the people in your life and how often they 
they try to drag you into their river of drama and negativity. And if possible, remove those people who did it, do that frequently. Remove them from your life or find ways to opt out of being pulled into the water with them. And if you do these things that I've discussed in this video, you're going to stay dry. You're going to finally avoid the impact, a negative impact, of people's recurring drama and negativity. So I'd like to know, do you often get sucked into other people's drama and negativity? Do you get wet? Do you jump into that river? Do you find it difficult not to jump into that river with them? Or what other solutions have you come up with to not get wet, <laughs> to not get dirty? Tell me in a comment down below. I'm Nina Amir, the Inspiration to Creation Coach. In case you don't know me yet, I am a uh, one of about 1,300 certified high performance coaches working around the world. I'm an intuitive transformational coach, and I'm an author coach and an author. And I love helping people get from where they are to where they want to go by getting out of their own way, by learning to be someone who can take the actions that help them create what really matters to them. Because I believe we're all creators powerful creators. We're spiritual beings having a human experience, and that spiritual part of us is creative. And the actions we take as humans are what help us create the things we desire. But most of the time, we're in our own way. Most of the time, we're in our own way. So if you'd like to get out of your own way, click on the link above to find out how to work with me. And um, yeah, and if you're unsure, or you'd like to get to know me a little better and see if we're a good fit to be to, for me to be your coach and for you to be my client, then click on the other link up above and sign up for a free 15 minute chat with me. Let's talk, let's have a soul alignment session where we see if we are aligned and see whether um, I can you know, even help you a little bit in the short amount of time we have, 15 minutes, and whether we can figure out if we're a good fit, okay? So you can click on that link above um, it says, let's talk, I think. And uh, yeah, and check out the ways to work with me. If you have questions, you can always leave me a comment down below. I'd be happy to answer. And until I talk to you next time, go out there and achieve more inspired results. Mm -hmm.